Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the Best DFS Show that just happens to come at you around 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond. Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter. Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. Welcome to another Roto Pros EPL breakdown for the main slate on DraftKings and FanDuel for Saturday, December 22nd, 2018. Let's jump right into it today. I don't want to waste any time. I think there's a bunch of different takes we're going to be able to jump on today, and there's going to be a bunch of different narratives that we're going to be able to play with and kind of decide where to go uh so let's just right away jump into this i don't think there's uh, too much that needs to be said or uh too much that needs to be uh broken down ahead of time uh we have brighton traveling to bournemouth leicester traveling to chelsea southampton making the trip to huddersfield crystal palace uh traveling to manchester city fulham uh traveling way up north to newcastle uh watford traveling to west ham we have a, a nice uh a london derby there and a man united and cardiff uh so yeah let's uh let's just start with this right away Brighton traveling to Bournemouth. I think the big thing to take away from this game first is that Brighton, uh, despite a slight improvement this year, is still one of the worst away teams in the league. And every single slate they pop up as an away team, that's something that we're going to be able to target. Um, the big point I think I'm really looking at this slate is uh, basically how Bournemouth will be lining up in terms of their defenders. Uh, Br- Brighton are not a team to stop teams from crossing. They tend to Jump, I'll jumble everyone together, uh, defend really tight, and allow teams just to kind of do things around them and just straight defend. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that holds up this slate against a team like Bournemouth, who are very effective on the counter and the cross. Uh, Diego Rocco, Rico is someone I'm definitely checking out this slate. I'm not 100% sure if he's going to start, uh, but if he does, he's definitely something I'm buying into. This midweek, Bournemouth uh, was the Carabao Cup, uh, and Bournemouth just lost to Chelsea uh, one nothing in a very late eight Hazard goal. Uh, Diego Rico played 90 minutes. I'm not sure if that will transpire again for another 90 minute game. If he does happen to start, get him into your cards this slate at only 4.7k on DraftKings. That's an excellent value. It isn't definitely, or excuse me, it definitely isn't something I would chase on uh, the uh, FanDuel side of things, uh, simply because uh, over here, uh, the pricing and the uh, the scoring is set up a little bit different. And while you see him uh, towards the bottom, he, he is viable in terms of like a a really decent cash punt because we don't have to worry too much about uh, Brighton. But in terms of upside and high end, there really is nothing, uh, even from that salary range. So unless you're like really looking to save money on FanDuel or you're not really chasing a ceiling, uh, Diego Rico works over there as well. Uh, the midfield is really where I'll be looking, uh, really in both sides of this game. I won't be so high in Solly March as I have been the past few weeks. I think he's really an up-and-coming DFS star if he can continue this consistent output that he's been using. Um, you, you'll notice his massive salary jump. There's nothing really to stop you here from using him against Bournemouth. Bournemouth are not that great of a team, uh, and uh, March has been putting in more than enough uh, crosses. Now, obviously, his salary is getting to a point where you need a ceiling, and unfortunately, on a team like Brighton, you're rarely going to find a ceiling like that. So, for the time being, being at 7.7k, I'm really not too interested in that on DraftKings and on FanDuel. Much can be the same. Much can be the same over here. As uh, while at 7.5 isn't uh, as expensive, he definitely isn't scored as well over here. So that isn't something I'm really interested in. Uh, but. Uh, uh, again, like up front, there just isn't a whole lot for Brighton. Uh, even with Glenn Murray, he just isn't as good away from home as he is at home. So it just isn't something I'm looking to target. Now, that being said, I do think Brighton can score uh, as Bournemouth aren't that great at keeping the ball of the net. But uh, really, Ryan Frazier and Callum Wilson continue to be, well, I shouldn't say continue. They are the top scoring stack so far this season. They've combined for six goals. No other two players have combined for that many goals. There's a couple guys at two and four, but that's really as close as it gets. Uh, so that's always in play, especially at home against a team like Brighton. Uh, I have no issues with that. One of my favorite stats from this game for this slate is that no team has drawn more penalty shots this season than Bournemouth's five, and no team has conceded more penalty shot goals than Brighton's five. So if you're looking for a penalty shot, uh, I definitely would target uh, Bournemouth in this one. Uh, Brighton have allowed enough and uh, have conceded enough from the spot that it immediately becomes a viable 
viable option. So Callum Wilson, uh, I do really like him, but I think one of my favorite GP plays from this game is going to be Josh King at only 7.2K. That's just a pretty big discount for uh, someone who really isn't that big of a difference player compared to Callum Wilson. Uh, now you'll notice uh, he obviously doesn't have the same kind of floor, but I'm not really looking for the floor this late in cash. Uh, you could still round out on Callum Wilson. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. Uh, but at the same time, like his ceiling may be slightly better, but uh, his floor is way, way worse. So uh, it, it all depends if you want to go the stacked route with the pair of them. That's totally fine. Or just solo on Josh King. That's really my two takes from this game. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of relevance outside of the, the Bournemouth forwards in particular. And maybe a crossing back out of the back. Uh, but... Um, I'll say a 2-1, 2 uh, Bournemouth win here. I really don't think it'll be a clean sheet. They just haven't been good enough. And in the case that it is a clean sheet, it'll come on the backs of Brighton just simply not shooting the ball. So uh, what will end up happening is Begovic will tap out at 14 max as his ceiling. And uh, while that isn't the worst score, I think there's a lot of lot better keeper plays this slate, especially from 5.K on DraftKings. And uh, the, uh, oh wow, he's really cheap over here. <clears throat> I guess a lot of that has to do with the fact that, like I said, uh, Brighton won't be shooting the ball enough to really warrant a, a big save count, which is how uh, FanDuel prices their keepers fairly heavily. So I, I suppose you can get away with it in GPP over here with Begovic, but it definitely isn't something to chase in cash uh, for either site. Uh, but I'll say a 2-1 Bournemouth for the win. Next game on the slate, we have Chelsea travel or Chelsea hosting Leicester in uh, what should be really a super cut and paste game. Um, uh, this is Chelsea's game to lose. Basically, uh, they've been keeping clean sheets like uh, it's a uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy at home, and uh, it really doesn't take too much to know that. These are teams that they're really handling at home, especially the Man City game. Really drove home the fact that Chelsea are an astounding home team and very, uh, very weak. I shouldn't say weak, comparably weak away from home. Uh, so, yeah, I I don't like Kepa's salary at 5.9K, but he isn't the most expensive keeper of the week. So it isn't the worst idea. I just... Uh, I think Leicester's probably due for some goals here. They haven't done really well in London. They haven't done well against Chelsea. Uh, they haven't been doing well lately. Arguably, Leicester are one of the least informed teams in the entire league right now, let alone for this slate. So they aren't exactly a team that I'm just jumping over joy to target across the board. Uh, whether it's Chelsea not allowing a lot of floors or ceilings or Leicester just not playing very well and not finding solid floors or ceilings. Um, it's just not something to really go for. I think Leicester have only won once or twice in their previous nine games. So like this is a really at a form team right now. And Chelsea, on the other hand, are just absolutely flying, uh, especially in terms of someone like Hazard, uh, who is uh, leading the league right now. Uh, basically, he's, he's only started 13 games and he has 17 points. Uh, so that that is a league-leading statistic when you consider how few games he's actually started. Uh, he's been playing brilliantly. Um, there's not a lot of reason not to take Hazard this slate. Even uh, maybe you could get away with the GPP uh, on the idea that Leicester maybe hold Chelsea to a lower ceiling, or this is like a, a tighter, a tighter tackling, uh, less offensive game because both teams do like to counter. Um, it. I just don't see Chelsea not winning this three nothing, uh, and Hazard being involved at least two goals. Uh, always be concerned about William and Pedro. They take each other off. They sub each other out. I think William only had one of his uh, few. I think it was his third ninety minute game this season. Uh, I think it's said there somewhere. Anyways, yeah, third time this season. So like. Generally, what happens is him and Pedro sub each other out and Hazard stays on for the full 90 minutes. And especially, uh, take a look to see if uh, Morata is uh, starting or even in the bench. Uh, because if he isn't and Giroud gets to start, you could maybe jump on that in some GPP. Uh, but in terms of cash, uh, I really don't see any reason not to jump on the Hazard train uh, for both cash or GPP. Uh, the one stack I would always take in GPP is the Alonso to Hazard. And you can also jump in some Kepa with that. But you're getting pretty 
expensive at that point and you're kind of cutting out all your salary legs so yeah i, I prefer just sticking with hazard this slate um cash or gpp one of the top plays pretty obvious with the top salary but uh he's just been playing brilliantly as of late so i have uh, absolutely no issue with that and unless like uh even if jamie Vardy's starting he just hasn't looked impressive uh the questionable hasn't been good i know he's got a couple goals there but you'll notice that they both came as subs so um generally speaking uh, I don't play ga- players that aren't playing 90 minutes. And while he is playing 90 minutes, again, it's kind of touch and go right now with uh, his health status. So uh, I'm going to stick with the Chelsea 3-0 win and Hazard with two points. Next game on the slate, we have Southampton traveling to Huddersfield. This should be an absolutely garbage game for GPP, but absolutely chock full of uh, of uh, cash options. On uh, either side of the field, either position, you can kind of go across the board here and just pick and choose. I think Billing uh, stands as not only one of the better cash plays of the slate, but arguably one of the better all-around, just trustworthy plays of the entire slate. He may not have a maximum ceiling to really work with because he does play in Huddersfield, uh, but he, he has a tremendous floor, and without Aaron Moy involved, he is the, the vocal point for the Huddersfield attack. And considering they are at home and Southampton isn't that great, we can expect a little bit of a ceiling. Not a, a true ceiling, but enough of a ceiling from uh, his salary at 5.3K where uh, we can easily uh, just uh, jump all over him in a DK. Now on draft or excuse me on FanDuel it's a little bit different of a situation here now obviously you can still definitely use uh Hazard the only issue is that he's a midfielder over here uh but uh yeah sticking with the Southampton and uh Huddersfield game you'll see that Billing's one of the more expensive midfielders uh and for good reason don't get me wrong it's just not as viable over here uh especially when you have someone like Holberg uh, down at 7.5k who scores just as well uh so basically on on either site really you can use Holberg and or uh Billing I definitely prefer the Billing side of the ball uh, but if you're to fall on both of them in cash, I I think there's worse options. That's absolutely for sure. Uh, Holberg's far from my favorite cash option, uh, simply because they are away against a half decent home team in Huddersfield. Uh, but in terms of uh, across the board, like I said, you can go low, you can go target. If uh, Bertrand is back, obviously you can go him from that salary. Both keepers are looking at an incredibly low-scoring game. While I'm not psyched about the saves going in either direction and the fact that most Southampton keeper games are ruined by the fact nobody wins because there's always draws. Uh, it, it's interesting to see how to, uh, I should say Southampton fired their coach uh, previous to last weekend's game and came out and beat Arsenal 3-2. If that honeymoon's still going, they're they're probably going to trounce Huddersfield for a couple goals. If that honeymoon's over, uh, Huddersfield's probably going to find a way here to get a result against a really inherently poor Southampton team. Uh, so I- I'm going to stick with Billing uh, as my play from this game. I think he's safe in either formats. Uh, but like I said, across the board here, you could probably get away with anything in cash that's viable, whether it's Holberg, uh, Elanassi if he's starting, Ward Prowse if he's the only set pieces guy, Matt Target with his open crosses, Low with his set pieces. Just stay away from the forwards. All the forwards, just stay away. Uh, Redmond doesn't have a ceiling. No ceiling in Mooney and Deporte, considering Hartsfield haven't scored a forward goal at home yet this season. And Ings, Austin, Gabby are all just as likely to sub each other out than break a slate or even find super relevant. So I'm just not interested in the forwards. Stick with Billing. You should be absolutely fine with that. A final score here, I will say 1-1 draw, 1-0 Huddersfield win. Next game in the slate, we have Crystal Palace traveling to Man City. Couple crazy stats I'm trying to remember off the top of my head here. Crystal Palace has not scored a goal at City since 2005. Crystal Palace has not beaten City since 2012 when they did at home, and they haven't won away in Crystal at uh, City in, in forever too. So it's just like an all-around bad situation here for Palace historically. And then we can just take the modern spin of things, and they're going to get absolutely crap kicked across the field. Like uh, I think 
inherently Palace has GPP upside just because nobody will be on them whatsoever. And uh, they do have the Guasa, the new goaltender. Um, it really wouldn't surprise me at all because DFS is DFS to see him come out with eight saves and only let in one or two goals. There's really nothing uh, other than City being City. And we only have to look so far uh, back at the Chelsea game. I know that was at Chelsea, but that just shows you that City are impervious. Like, they're not perfect here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, across the board, avoid the defenses. There's just nothing there to even talk about. Maybe if you want to chase a uh, Palace, or excuse me, a Man City clean sheet, considering Palace have, hasn't scored at City in like well over a decade, almost a decade and a half now. Uh, you can definitely chase some Laporte at only 3.7K. I have no problem with that whatsoever below 4K. Jump all over that center back. Um, this is where the question really starts to, to come down. And like a lot of this is going to come up with who City actually end up starting. Uh, I'm predicting and preparing for it to be Leroy Sané. Over the midweek, City beat Leicester in the Carabao Cup 1-0 on penalty shots. And Sané wasn't even on the bench. So I am expecting Mara's played 90 minutes. Sterling came on and played a good solid half hour. So I am expecting Sané to see a full 90 minutes. I'm also expecting the forwards of Jesus and Aguero to split the game and uh, both draw some heavy ownership. So... It's tough right now for me to say exactly what to do. My strategy at this moment, without looking at the locked lineups, uh, is Sané, Cash, Sterling, GPP. Sterling has scored a goal in every home game that he started this season except for one. Do you want goal upside? Take Raheem Sterling. Is it necessarily Cash viable? No, he doesn't really have the floor. Stick with Sané in that floor and hope to draw an assist or two or maybe sneak in a goal. In GPP... <clears throat> that's where you want to roll with the Sterling because you know that's where his ceiling is. And in all reality, a goal isn't a floor. Like, you can't rely on that no matter how good he is consistently as a floor. If he's taken seven shots a game Ronaldo style, that's a different scenario altogether. and We could say that's his floor. Uh, but uh, the truth of the matter is, is that he's a great player. He's going to do fine, but he's not going to shoot the ball or have a kind of volume to really warrant as a, a floor cash play. Uh, so yeah, Sané, Cash, Sterling, GPP, Fade Palace unless you're really feeling risky and you want to jump on some of the uh, Grada. But uh, in terms of uh, City, I, I you know what, I'll even go out on a limb and say Laporte is Cash viable from 3.7k. Because that clean sheet is such a, a tangible aspect for this slate. I usually don't chase uh, clean sheets in cash. But I think that's pretty relevant this slate. Considering Palace hasn't scored at City since 2005. So uh, as usual the usual suspects. Sané, Cash, Sterling, GPP. City will win at least 3 nothing. Next game on the slate. We have Fulham traveling to Newcastle. Um, this is going to be a very interesting game uh, for a few different reasons. I, I quickly want to touch on why you shouldn't play Ederson. He's a fine goaltender. He's probably not going to let in any goals, but he's also not going to see enough saves to offset any goal he may let in. And from 6K, you not only need saves, but you need that win and the clean sheet all combined into one. And while the clean sheet and the win is very real, seeing enough saves to pay off compared to some of the other options we'll talk about here in 5 4 3 2 1. Newcastle, I think Debraca is an excellent play this slate at only 5.2K. He's probably one of my favorite keeper plays. Uh, Fulham just haven't been very good as of late, especially that Ryan Sessegnon, they're missing an element to their attack. Uh, in general, they've been poor, uh, not only being the league's worst team, they have the league's worst defense in one of the league's worst in history. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just have no issue. They haven't, I think it's 21 straight games now without a clean sheet. Now, my big take, actually I have two major takes for, for this game, from this game, for this slate, for this slate, from this game, however you want to word it. Uh, the first is Callum Chambers at only 3.6K. Huge steal. You're going to have to put him in your cash cards. He's put up a floor solid enough to warrant uh, any kind of major salary. Now, obviously, you want to ignore some of that. It's more of this right here. He plays as more of a defensive midfielder now, which really, really helps jack things up. And while Fulham won't get a clean sheet, 
uh, he's getting midfielder action for a center back price. And that's just a big discount. Uh, and while Laporte, you're kind of reaching with the clean sheet. You're kind of reaching with the other things. Uh, Chambers is a solid floor play that you can get away with uh, in cash. I definitely wouldn't recommend it for GPP because he doesn't have a true ceiling, especially without a goal or assist, which probably isn't coming. Uh, but either format, uh, have no issue, even with uh, Debrac at the same time too. But Chambers is definitely someone you're going to want to get in there. Um, yeah, Fulham across the board just aren't drawing enough interest from me, especially when uh, we look at Newcastle. And the first thing that really blows my mind about Newcastle that I've been trying to figure out is why Kieran Clark is so expensive. Um, don't get me wrong, he's been playing decent enough, but outside of like this absurdly productive game, he really hasn't been like that crazy, crazy, crazy all season without a clean sheet. Uh, yes, uh, he gets goals every once in a while, but like, is that really what we're targeting against Fulham? Is their defense that bad that we can put their center, uh, Newcastle center back at 5.1 K? It's not even like Fulham crossed the ball a lot, so he's not going to get a lot of clearances and everything. I just can't figure out why he's a 5.1 K. It's usually a good indication that we should take him because I'm not that sharp. Uh, but I think Matt Ritchie is an incredible play at only 6.5 K. Uh, he is not my favorite cash play because his minutes have been uh, jumping all over the place, but I have absolutely no issue with him in GPP whatsoever. I think you could roll with some Kennedy as well. And if John Joe Shelby is missing, if you really want to be risky, take some Sung Yang. Uh, probably not my favorite play, even from 3.8K. It's more of a risk, uh, and he doesn't really have much upside, so it's a little bit too much risk uh, for cash. But he, he is always uh, kind of like an outlier sharp play. Uh, but Easily my favorite GPP play this slate is going to be Rondon uh, on Newcastle uh, for only 7.8K. Uh, huge, huge discount for the amount of GPP upside he brings. Um, in seven of the last eight Newcastle goals and in the past three straight Newcastle goals, Rondon has either had a goal or an assist in that goal. So legitimately speaking, considering... Newcastle is the worst team in the league. They have the worst defense in league history, not only this year, but literally in the history of the EPL. They have one of the worst. They've conceded in 21 straight games. Rondon has had a hand in the last three straight Newcastle goals and seven of the eight Newcastle goals. Three straight home goals, excuse me. That's just like a stone cold lock for me in GPP all around. Uh, and even that is even driven home further when we jump over here on FanDuel and we take a look at his salary over here. And he's one of the most expensive forwards of the entire slate. Not just of uh, of the the uh, the team or the game, but like of the slate. He's up there. And so is Perez, which I think is a little bit laughable over here. But point being, uh, I think Newcastle... Attack is something you're going to have to attack this slate. Fulmer are just too bad at the back to ignore uh, someone like Rondon in GPP at only 7.8K. Now, minutes aren't great. You may have to drop back to someone like Perez or even Kennedy at only 5.7K, who I think is a massive steal for the minutes he provides along with the exposure to the league's worst, league's historically worst defense. Um yeah, interesting to see how Newcastle lines up, but you're going to need some of them because Fulham are just that bad. Um, I want to say something crazy like 3-1-4-1 Newcastle. Like just absolutely come out flying and uh, someone gets multiple points. But I it, I probably see this being more close to a 2-1 Newcastle win, maybe a 2-0 Newcastle win. Uh, point being though, out of all the keepers that cost more than 5 k I believe DeBracco will see the most saves this slate, making him one of the more viable keeper options. So yeah, let's say let's say two nothing just to keep things fresh. Next game on the slate, we have Watford traveling to West Ham. Um and yeah, this one's tough uh because let me get switched up over here. There wasn't really much takes from that game anyways. Um I want to say Fabanski, top keeper, play of the slate. Uh, Watford have just been rotten as of late. They're one of the least informed teams in the league. Uh, been brutal, absolutely brutal away from home this season. Uh, arguably the worst away home team this season. 
Fabanski's won four straight. It's hard not to really like what they're doing here. Uh, so, yeah, 5K, fire up some Fabanski, even against uh, Watford. I probably wouldn't take it in GPP just because Watford are a little bit too risky. But in cash, I think it has tons of uh, tons of uh, viable uh, upside uh, from only 5K. Because Watford are going to shoot the ball enough, and they've been bad enough away from home and in general so far this season that it's something that we can uh, safely rely on in terms of someone like Fabanski. Because we know West Ham are still going to allow lots of saves, and we know Fabanski is constantly going to be up for it. Now, in terms of options as players, West Ham are absolutely brutalized by injuries right now. And I do think uh, Snodgrass is one of the uh, top cash plays this slate. I would like to take him in GPP, but I'm just not sure how much ceiling he can actually find from 7.8K on West Ham against Watford. Now, Watford are conceding at a near Fulham rate, so we do know West Ham are going to score. It's just a matter of from who and where and when. Um, I'm going to fade Holobos this slate. I think that may be a tough take. It's a little bit scary in cash because when you do that, you're basically eliminating uh, the entire script that anyone who takes Holobos will be stuck to. And if that script happens to do well, you're basically screwed. Uh, I just don't like Holobos from 6K this late. I think there's far better options uh, despite his incredible uh, crossing upside. And there's nothing to take away from it. It's come down a little bit over the last few slates, though we still found ways to produce. It's just not where I'm looking uh, immediately, as I usually do, uh, towards Holobos. So that's just my own take. Feel free to play him. I would never talk you out of taking Holobos in cash. GPP, I would definitely try and talk you out of, but not cash. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of warrant to the West Ham stacks in general with like Anderson despite his salary. Uh, and you can probably even get away with the game stack. Delphi was looking like he may be potentially about to break out. Uh, now, I know this is kind of an outlier, but he's he's a Barcelona product. He's not some slouch. Like people have been waiting for him to absolutely blow up here over the past, uh, since he's arrived really. So yeah, that's something to consider. Uh, but again, this is a lot uh, like the other situations where we have to wait and see how West Ham line up their starting lineups and who's on the bench. Uh, Chikorito could be viable from 7.9 K unless it's super obvious. He's coming off the field at some point. Andy Carroll, exact same situation from 5.2 K. It almost doesn't matter. He's, if, he comes off the field if we manage to sneak a goal which is like incredibly unlikely um you're flying now he's definitely not my G favorite gpp option i would definitely prefer looking at like philippe anderson or even snodgrass uh but yeah i do think west ham do hold the keys to success this slate i think their salaries their ceiling and their ownerships are going to be generally uh way viable uh in either format really uh snodgrass in either format fabanski in either format and get a forward in there to stack with snodgrass for gpp don't sleep on fleep anderson as either a one-off or as a stack with everyone else too if you want to go super heavy west ham because watford have been that bad defensively this season they just let Cardiff score twice and almost lost after being up 3-0. Uh, I've got no time for that in DFS. I'm not going to risk anything on that. In fact, I'll jump on the West Ham side despite them being so crazy and consistent. Now, to that level of inconsistency, West Ham have won uh, four straight back-to-back -back games and are looking to win five straight back-to-back -back games uh, for the first time in forever and ever. And they've never actually won three straight home games in their new London stadium, uh, which they've won back to back. So West Ham are definitely coming into this with some history that they're looking to set right. And I fully expect them to do it. What I'm going to say may stun some people. I think this is going to be a 4-2 game. I think this could completely shoot out both sides. I would obviously prefer the West Ham side. And I'll say something more realistic, like 3-0, 3-1. Uh, but it really wouldn't surprise me if this game outscored a lot of the other games this slate, excluding the United and Chelsea. Uh, so yeah, I will say 3 nothing just to be a nice guy, but I, I, I do think this could get crazy and uh, finish something like 4-2 uh, West Ham. 
Final game of the slate, we have Man United traveling to Cardiff. Very quickly, like I said, Marino's fired. Uh, Schulzer, one of my favorites uh, Man United players of all time, is in charge now. And just quickly type, type, type into Google, Ole, O-L-E, Gunner, G-U-N-N-A-R, and avoid the uh, Mighty Ducks videos that come up with Gunner Style, which are also really great. Find some old Gunnar Scholzer videos from the late 90s, early 2000s of him absolutely going ham on the EPL. One of the purest goal scorers uh, of his generation. Absolutely incredible player. And if you haven't figured it out by this point, Man United are going to be attacking the slate. I know there's a honeymoon theory that's very true. And chances are without Mourinho, they're going to play better as is. I've been watching some of the highlights uh, from the uh, Schultzar training sessions at United, and I'm serious. This is we're potentially looking at one of the biggest blowout games of not only the slate, uh, but of the season, where Man United could just go absolutely ham. Now, you want to talk a game, game, uh, game stack? Cardiff have won three of their previous, I think, three straight home games, three of their previous four, and. Uh, for their previous seven or something like that home they've scored in three straight home games like they're going to score a goal it only matters here how many united will score and honestly all scripts are off the hook at this point pogba's worth a hat trick lukaku's worth a hat trick lukaku's probably probably my favorite gpp play of the entire slate uh his salary considering uh where united are right now uh, just absurd. Like 7.4K. I know he's been really, really bad this season. And I know he's one of only two players, including Jesse Lingard, who openly defended Mourinho to uh, Ed Woodward, the um, chairman of uh, Manchester United. So it wouldn't surprise me here to see Lukaku just absolutely break out for a multi-goal performance. I picked him up in season long. I'm taking a stand on this that United are going to come out big. I love Scholzer. I love what he does. I love what he's doing to this team. And I love how bad Cardiff's defense is. Um, now, that being said, they are still at home. They're probably still going to score. And United have only kept one away sheet, a clean sheet, and one home clean sheet this season. Two in total. That's not enough. They've conceded as many goals at this point of this season that they did in all of last season combined. So... Yeah, Cardiff should score. I don't mind thinking about some guys like uh, Hoyland again or maybe Bobby Reed or even some Patterson. Um, I would probably stay away from Camarasa just because I'm not looking at the floor this slate. Uh, but yeah, in terms of United, just do your thing. I know it's the late game, so it could be a little bit tough. Don't be afraid to stack two or three players like Pogba, Marshall, and Lukaku and hope to get two of the starters and then pivot to the third. Um, game stack this game, I guarantee nobody will be owning both sides of this game. Like It will be the least owned game stack of the season that includes a high-end team like Man United. Uh, so yeah, that, that's really my take for this game. I'm going to say another 4-2 game. Uh, I think it could very easily turn out this way uh, with Man United's honeymoon going through and Cardiff's ability at home and United's inability to defend so far this season. Now, I want to quickly touch on that. This has nothing to do with Mourinho, the style of play, DeGay, who's still one of the best keepers in the entire world. Man United just suck at the back. They're really bad. Really, really bad. Across the board, 100%. Do not deserve to wear the United Crest. Uh, so it, I'm blown away that they re-signed Chris Smiling until 2022 or whatever. But anyways, back to the point. United are just bad at the back. It's inherent until they completely change out their entire defensive roster. These goals are going to keep coming. Uh, Cardiff's going to score at least once, probably twice. United's probably going to have to score more than twice. And they're probably going to be able to. 3-2, 4-2 United. Final take. Thanks for tuning everyone. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I really appreciate it. Make sure to hit the like, uh, comment, hit the subscribe button, jump over to rotapros.com, check out our articles. I have this up in text form today, too. Uh, a lot of the news and notes from today, a lot of the stats that I messed up, uh, make sure to check it out there. Rotopros.com, articles, drop down. All of it's free, but hit up the soccer. Um, yeah, that's really it. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter. Hit me up over there. Thanks a lot for tuning in, everyone. Hopefully see you at the top this slate. Good luck.